Hi, good morning, everyone. All right, I have my entire panel. Uh, again, good morning. Uh, I'm very excited to be moderating this panel. Our theme for this panel is really how the next gen is taking on the reins in corporate India, and what are some of the challenges and changes that they're, what are some of the challenges they face, and what are some of the changes they're bringing about. You know, while in some ways uh, being part of an established enterprise, uh, you know, gives you a kind of a safety net to be able to experiment and innovate and diversify. But I think at the same time, at least from an outside-in perspective, uh, my sense is the expectations uh, and the weight of expectations that are thrown upon you as uh, you know, a next-gen you know, uh, member of uh, a business that's been around for several years, you know, how does one live up to those expectations? Uh, you know, how do you earn your stripes? How do you sort of make sure that uh, the change that you want to implement is accepted and uh, helps the business uh, move in the right direction? So we'll chat about some of these themes today. I have with me a very distinguished panel, uh, Anjali Merchant, who's a director and runs international markets for Encore Healthcare which is one of the largest uh, tablets and capsule manufacturers uh, in the country. Uh, Preeti Sureka, who's a director with the Imami Group, and they have a legacy of several years in terms of several uh, brands that all of us uh, have heard, even while we were growing up, uh, and I'm not young by any standard, so. Uh, we have uh, Preeti Rathi Gupta, who's a startup founder, although she does uh, you know, come from uh, a very large financial services institution uh, in the country, very well-respected financial services institution. She set up uh, a company called Lakshmi, and we'll chat with her on what that experience has been. And last but definitely not the least, I have Deepak Ji, Deepak Agarwal, who's the MD of uh, Bika Ji Foods. Uh, again, a brand that all of us, uh, you know, consume, see every day, uh, and love, a lot of us love. So I think, I hope this is going to be a very interesting discussion. We have about 30 minutes, and we'll, we'll go through the panel, and you know, I'll have a conversation with them. Hopefully, we'll have some time for questions from all of you in the end, and I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, so let me begin with you, Deepak Ji. You know, Bika Nate se BSE ka safar, jo aapne pura kiya, or successfully kiya, or aapki jo category hai, you know, the snacks, uh, if we talk about bhujia, there is a tradition, there is a taste of relevance, there is a consistency that every time you open the package, you get the taste, you get the freshness. How did you start your journey? How did you start your journey? How did you start from Beacon Air? How did you adopt the technology? But still keeping that tradition and the taste and the consistency that you need in your business, which I think is the most important aspect of me. If you can talk, uh, you know, some experience, if you can share with the audience. Ke saath, uh. Uh, first of all, good morning and thank you uh, for this platform. And I'm really privileged to, you know, uh, uh, join this panel. So uh, this journey has, you know, uh, has started from 1993 and uh, before that. And I just wanted to tell you that, you know, in Bikane, from a small city, um, Bikaji company and my father has... Uh, is the first person who set up the industry from Hawaii. Earlier, you know, we were all have a just karkhana, ek chota karkhana hota tha, ek choti si uh, gali mein ya shahar mein. But, you know, uh, he thought of that, why don't, you know, I have a one industry so I can commercialize and I can go better for automation and for scale up. So, chote se shahar mein uh, ye journey start hui aur humne usko automation ko adopt kiya. So adoption ke time pe bahut challenges the because from Bikaner to change the mindset and to change the approach uh, of uh, all the you know public and even the staff and everyone. So they required a quite good skill and training also. But wo karna zaruri tha kyunki uh, uh, usko ek uh, scale pe leke jana hai agar kisi cheez ko aur better karna hai uh, product ko to wo uh, required tha ki hum technology aur automation ko adopt kare. Uh, the fact is that, you know, we always say that the old 
जो फूड होता था वो आजकल ऐसा नहीं है या जो माँ के हाथों का खाना होता था या पुराने जमाने में वो आज ऐसा नहीं है बट पहले I, पहले वाला अच्छा होता था आई थिंक ऐसा मानते हैं सब ऐसा मानते हैं बट एक्चुअली द फैक्ट इज कि आज के टाइम पे ज़्यादा फ्लेवर्स है ज़्यादा सीजनिंग है और ज़्यादा बेटर है ना दीज डेज वॉट एवर द इंग्रीडियंट्स वी हैव इज ऑलमोस्ट हैव अ मोर क्लीन मोर हाइजेनिक एंड बेटर ऑर्गेनिक डे बाई डे जैसे जैसे अवेयरनेस आ रही है सो इट विल बिकम मोर ऑर्गेनिक एंड आज अगर हम लोग प्रोसेस को टेक्नोलॉजी के रीजन से वी हैव ऑल काइंड ऑफ यू नो क्वालिटी कंट्रोल लैब वी अंडरस्टैंड दैट वॉट काइंड ऑफ अ मॉइस्चर एंड एवरी थिंग इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर द फूड एंड कुकिंग बेकिंग तो वो सब करते करते आज का जो फूड है वो दिन ब दिन बेटर होता जा रहा है तो टेक्नोलॉजी और एडोपशन में ये हमने किया एंड even my company was the first company in india who adopted the packaging in bujia and bujia is you know uh, only uh, the product which is you know known from the bikaner uh, first and bikaner jana bhi usi ke naam se jana jata hai to bujia ko bada karne mein hamari family ka bahut bada uh, contribution raha hai and then every time then we were into sweets also and we were, uh, all the products were uh, only handmade and manual system manual system ko agar hum log dekhenge to kai bar to khane ka man karega aur kai bar aisa bhi lagega ki i can't eat ha but humne usko kaise kaise usko semi automation karte hue aaj ki date mein fully automatic uh, fully processed uh, better handling humne ye sab adopt kiya because today's time pe technology ke sath mein chalna bahut zaruri hai scale karne ke liye ऑटोमेशन का बहुत ज़रूरी है एंड इट इज़ मोर कन्वीनियंस कम्फर्ट हाइजीन एंड बेटर प्रोडक्ट्स टू ऑफरिंग टू द कंज्यूमर सो दैट इज़ व्हाट वी आर लुकिंग फॉर ऑलवेज एंड हमारी जर्नी जो है वो बीकानेर में रहते हुए हमने खाली प्रोसेस को ऑटोमाइज नहीं किया वहाँ के हमारे पूरे बीकानेर को हमने ये सिखाया कि हम एक छोटे से शहर में रहते हुए भी हम बी तक पहुंच सकते हैं तो हमने कैसे वहाँ पे इतना एम्प्लॉयमेंट जनरेट किया टुडे वी हैव अराउंड थ्री थाउजेंड एम्प्लॉयज़ इन आर फैक्ट्री इन ओनली इन बीकानेर वेयर एज वी हैव अ टोटल एम्प्लॉयमेंट इज़ फोर थाउजेंड ऑल इंडिया वाइड एंड इट्स टेक्नोलॉजी इज़ ऑल्सो इन आर ई आर पी ऑल्सो इन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑल्सो इन ऑल द फील्ड इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर टू टाइम सर बट टेक्नोलॉजी के अलावा यू you नो know, आपको क्या लगता है ऐसी क्या एक दो चीज़ें हैं जो आपके लिए यू you नो know, आपको लगता है आपके सक्सेस को कंट्रीब्यूट किया है बिकॉज यू नो क्या एक फैमिली ओन बिजनेस होना यू नो डिड दैट प्रूव टू बी अ स्ट्रेंथ बिकॉज डिसीजन मेकिंग जो है आपके हाथों में है यू you नो know, एक फैमिली प्लस जैसे कंपनी बढ़ती है आई थिंक जो आपकी एबिलिटी है टू बी स्टे कनेक्टेड विद योर एम्प्लॉयज एंड यू नो एवरी वन एल्स इन द इको सो टेक्नोलॉजी के अलावा यू नो ऐसी एक दो चीज़ें अगर कोई आपके दिमाग में आए जो आपको लगता है दैट हेल्प द जर्नी श्योर हमारा जो बिजनेस है वो हम सबको हलवाई कहा जाता है इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट से पहले एंड हम लोग हमेशा फैमिली ओन बिजनेस रहे हैं और फैमिली डिसीजंस रहे हैं बट यू नो आई थाट एंड आफ्टर माई यू नो एजुकेशन एंड आई डिसाइडेड कि नहीं ये ओनर ड्रिवन से मैनेजमेंट ड्रिवन करना बहुत ज़रूरी है तभी हम उसको किसी स्केल पे या हम ऑल इंडिया वाइड ऑल इंटरनेशनली हम उसको लेके जा सकते हैं एक आदमी सारा काम तो कर नहीं सकता है सो दैट्स वाई यू नो इन 2014 वी वर द फर्स्ट कंपनी हु इनिशिएटेड फॉर द प्राइवेट इक्विटी द रीज़न बिहाइंड वॉज नॉट टू रेज द मनी द रीज़न वॉज बिहाइंड दैट यू नो हाउ टू डेवलप आर सेल्फ एंड आर प्रोसेस सिस्टम्स एंड हाउ वी विल बी रिस्पॉन्सिबल टू द बोर्ड एंड टू द पब्लिक ऑल्सो so that was the actual uh, uh, reason and uh, uh, जैसे जैसे हम लोगों ने नए uh, team को बड़, बड़, बड़ा किया uh, you know we hired the CFO एफ ओ सी एच आर ओ एंड सी ओ एंड एवरी थिंग तो उनसे जो हमें सीखने को मिला वो भी हमने अडॉप्ट किया एंड आई ट्रूली विश कि ये फैमिली ओन बिजनेस ज़रूर है एंड स्टिल वी टेक द डिसीजन्स बट इट इज़ ऑल अनोमिनस एंड टूगेदर एंड माई आई हैव अ फुल डेलीगेशन टू माई ऑल द मेम्बर्स and they are taking decisions and for, uh, taking forward this company and brand uh, on the next level that's a beautiful story uh, let me come to you anjali i think you've taken on uh, this role i believe recently in terms of driving the international expansion for your company now i think we were chatting about this earlier that uh, you know taking an indian pharma company overseas uh, while you have let's say market leadership position in india 
you know, in some ways being a startup and, uh, you know, re again, starting from, let's say, a very initial stage to be able to convince international buyers that we have the right quality, we have the right, uh, you know, product. How has your journey been? Uh, and again, you know, maybe reflect on the legacy that you carry from, you know, the Indian business and then how has that, has that helped you take uh, the brand overseas uh, or did you have to do something different to be able to uh, succeed? So first, thank you everyone for giving us your time and your attention. Uh, so if you consider legacy, right, and um, the kind of business that um, I've been a part of, we were discussing it earlier as well. I've been a part of this from a very, very young age, I feel like. You know, we were, um, these were dinner table discussions. Uh, I remember a time that my my parents, we, we were visiting my grandfather in Oman. He was unwell, that's where he lived. And um, my parents actually flew back for a USFD audit because of how important that audit was, right? And um, I come from a family where relationships are paramount. And at that time, it shocked me being like, how can you leave? Yeah, you know, how can you step away in such a situation? But it also gave me the kind of guidance to know what is a priority in this industry, right? So that's not something that you can take lightly. Um, you know, regulatory compliance, for at least in our industry, is extremely important. Um, these audits are extremely important. So when I entered the industry, I already had my priorities right, I feel like. I already had that guidance and that support. And um, that sort of helped me enter, that base helped me enter. Uh, now, the fact that we have a newer organization within our organization, it kind of is more exciting. And we do get to have certain processes without having the sort of older formal structure in place. You know, we have the ability to create uh, newer, maybe more uh, lateral structures. We have the ability to um, have conversations and have processes in place that are more related, more around collaboration rather than maybe, uh, which was maybe a l restricted in a more sort of formal older organization with, um, players that have been in the industry for so long, right? Because you started afresh. Yeah, uh, because in we... In a way. Yeah, in a way, it's, it's afresh within the organization. So we have the benefit of and the luxury of the past and the, the guidance of the past, but we also um, have the ability to create these processes on our own, which I think has been really good. Um, and your second question, which was in terms of putting our product out there on yeah, the... the acceptability of, uh, you know, coming from India, you know, again, from, again, a, what, what may be perceived as a, you know, family-driven business, uh, and how you were able to convince, uh, you know, international buyers that, you know, you got what they need. Uh, and then we chatted about, uh, in fact, we were chatting about, you know, how pricing, uh, India generally is perceived to be a cost arbitrage destination, especially in uh, pharma, generics, uh, but is that uh, changing and how has that changed and what's your experience being? Yeah, so we would, over the last five years, right, uh, five years ago, it was, I feel like, much more difficult for us to put our products and sort of negotiate in a way other than price, right? Price was the most uh, important factor, uh, especially for the Indian products, where it felt as though uh, they considered our products sometimes even inferior. Now, Onco Healthcare, we're a part of an organization where we've always manufactured for larger MNCs. We have certain quality standards, and we weren't able to match those competitive prices that they requested, because we do have a lot of uh, um, costing that we have to take care of when it comes to these regulatory compliances. Um, and over the last five years, especially through COVID, uh, I think India showcased their manufacturing capabilities and what they have to offer at the global stage. Um, now, I f with, the, uh, with us having more of a stand, I think, globally, uh, due to our um, political alliances and due to our political, our presence overall, I'm able to even have conversations or request for people to come to the table, right? I am able to um, negotiate certain, uh, on other factors other than price, which is definitely more beneficial. And if you go forward um, in the future, I think there is going to be a lot more investment in R&D. We've put up our own new venture development 
team, which is focused on inventing not only newer products, but also um, in, uh, inventions within products that already exist, right? Uh, maybe inventions even in how you do certain manufacturing and certain manufacturing capabilities that you have. Uh, and I think you can even see that there's a new uh, product that's been uh, put out, put out, I think, yesterday, that's been approved by DCGI, where, um, for people who have reading glasses, yeah. and the, the, eye, the, the eye, drops. eye drops, yeah, and eye drops that, uh, that help you with c combating problems that are so small that even something like reading glasses can be uh, changed for the future, yeah, yeah, which yeah. I thought was really cool. So I think going on for in the next five years, there's going to be a lot more change that you see, and I think India is going to be able to compete much better and be considered a leader in the global stage. I'm going to pick on something you said. I'm yeah. sorry for doing that. But no, no, you mentioned do. uh, dinner table conversations. Yes. And it's interesting. I was chatting with a f startup founder yesterday, and he his orientation was also very similar. That you know, his story is that uh, you know, my c the reason I got into this business is because from very early on, I was taught th taught the importance of money, of being involved in financial decisions for the family or for the fact that you've got to stand on your own feet. Uh, does that resonate? Uh, is that part of your success? Uh? So, uh, so when I was talking about the dinner table discussions, yes, definitely, I think being a part of the business environment has always been considered to be um, of utmost importance, being part of the business community, giving back to your family, to your country, to sort of create value has been, has always been ingrained in me since I was a child. Um, but what I meant by dinner table discussions was I think pharmaceuticals is not an industry that uh, is considered, I think, cool or something that people want to get into, at least in my generation. And I feel like when I entered it, it already felt like something I was comfortable doing yeah. because I was part of these discussions for so long. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. We'll take a poll on that, whether pharma is considered cool or not, <laughs> especially after you, uh, you know, talking to the audience. <laughs> but uh, let me come to you, uh, Preeti ji, uh, and you, uh, I know I have two Preetis on the dais, so... Uh, <laughs> And all of, all of these uh, you know, pe lovely people on the stage have some connections. You know, they all know each other. They are, some of them are childhood friends. Some of them are, a lot of them are from Bikaner, it seems. Uh, so there are common connections. Uh, but let me build on what you were just chatting about. That, uh, and uh, you know, essentially, your company and the amount of storied brands that you have, mm -hmm. each of them are a legacy on their own, right? And these are brands that all of us have, you know, again, Possibly even my parents consumed, uh, you know, even before I was born. Uh, now take that, and then you know, when you joined the business, uh, you know, I'm sure you had fresh ideas. You wanted change. You wanted to drive the <laughs> business forward, taking what was good, and then you know, adding to that. Uh, but you know, and I'll probably you know move this question around with everyone. But in terms of you know earning your stripes, the you know the challenge that quite often I you know hear founders uh, and their next generations face is key. You know, we everyone thinks we are born with a silver spoon, and that means two things, right? Ki ek to expectations itni zada hai ki aapko sab kuch aata hai. You know, you know everything, and you are here to drive the ship. On the flip side, you know, ye to ji uh, family ke log hain, to you know, inki baat to sunni padegi. Uh, you know, so how do you earn your stripes, uh, and what has your experience been uh, with again the fact that, like I said, you know, the brands aapke hain, they're so solid. You know, such legacy brands. Uh, how do you take that and build on that? Because the where I'm coming from is the you know the at least in my mind the expectations that are set upon you the moment you set uh, for you know foot into the business uh, are probably so immense that how do you deal with that? Uh? So good morning everyone, and thank you for having me here, and for whatever it is worth, I'll share. Uh, you know, two words, five words from my side. So, Karan, you are absolutely right. You've, you've had your, one of the problem which we've been facing as legacy businesses is how to keep the brands relevant, you know? Yeah. Because on one side, we have the 50-year-old or the 80-year-old who've actually consumed it, who are consuming it. And then to keep it relevant with you, where it is a different mindset. And now, a bigger one, how to keep it relevant with your kid. Yeah? 
So to traverse these three is in itself a big challenge. But at the same time, uh, therein lies the excitement. Therein lies the you know, thrill. And therein lies the business mantra, how to adapt yourself with the new upcoming challenges of the consumer taste changing. The landscape has changed. Where people consume, that has changed. The needs of consumers have changed. To tap into that, to design products like that, that itself is a huge challenge. So to give you an example, we have this uh, brand Boro Plus, which I kind of assume you know of, because it's a market leader with about 70% market share in its category, which is huge in its thing. Uh, but again, there was a challenge where it is seen as a brand for the moms and the dads. And you don't see the younger consumer you know, warming up to it. Now, the challenge here is how to keep the brand ticking with the new consumer. So it's time for a brand rejuvenation. It's time for bringing in, you know, modern contemporariness, having the fear will the brand still be relevant to the older one? And we came up with this thing of Boro Plus Soft, with newer sensorials, with, uh, with a more modern, so to say, imagery around it. In Navratan, which was an older brand, we came up with Talcum to keep the relevance. So that's the kind of thing. As about earning our stripes, I always believe with, uh, with great power comes great responsibility. So the responsibility of being accountable to shareholders, to your consumers, to the more than 30,000 people or 40,000 families who are working with you. So that's the kind of... Uh, onerous responsibility we have and we have to rise up to. And there, you know, upskilling ourselves constantly, adapting ourselves, that is the kind of mantra which uh, spurs us forward. But you kind of always have to be on the on, on your toes, right? Because you, there's so many eyes watching you and they you know, some of them may want you to slip to say, okay, yeah, you know, dekha, humne kaha tha, right? Uh, you know. Sure. So, you know, the, the rate of change today is faster than what it was yesterday. And <laughs> it is the slowest. Then what is going to come the next second? Yeah. yeah. So to be agile, yet be conscious and not to have knee-jerk reactions. That's the kind of uh, balance we, I think we need to have as, a, as people nowadays and as entrepreneurs. Okay, this one's for all four of you and I'll come to, I have a question for you too, but I'm going to just mix it up now. This question is for all four of my panelists. Uh, who's been your biggest critic in the family when you've taken on you know, the role uh, that you do? Uh, and kis stage pe, you know, aapke, yeah, you know, seniors have said that you know, business safe hands, mein, you know, hama, you know, chalao and, you know, go and run it and sort of uh, what, what stage in your lives did that happen? Uh, any interesting experiences you can recount uh, for our audience? Uh, I'm still waiting. waiting. You're still waiting? <laughs> okay. Hopefully it happens soon. Deepak ji, sorry, you want to go first, Preeti? Yeah, I think my dad. <laughs> my dad, who's quite a maverick, and the architect of uh, the empire along with his partner. So I was very, very fortunate to have his uh, full confidence from the beginning. And that confidence uh, 
kind of set my confidence. It's a huge boost. So. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, I've had failures, which uh, kind of instilled a lot of learnings in me, much more than the successes. So outright, my father. Did. OK. For you? The critique. Who's been your biggest critique, and or at what stage did your your parents or your your seniors in the family say, okay, look, now now you're ready and you can do it on your own? Um, I think I've had it the other way round. Yeah. I think uh, given that also, you know, when we're talking about next gen, I'm actually one and a half gen, right? I'm not really the <laughs> next gen because I was part of setting up this business yeah. as well. So it's always the other way around. I find myself telling, even today, telling my father, no, 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 that's not the right way to do it, right? But <laughs> Reverse I think, mentoring. Well <laughs> reverse <done. laughs> mentoring. Why not? Uh, but really, frankly, I think that is also the power of... Um, of having, there was a time when, you know, family owned or family run businesses weren't sort of looked at very, um, you know, they were looked at with a little bit of a critical eye, right? But I think that's the power of being the family that, uh, you know, you can sort of critique each other. Thankfully for me, I think my siblings probably occasionally, but other than that, not really. And now I have the generation next, which is my children. I have a young son at home. I think he may be the biggest critique of what I do. Yeah, that generally happens, I think. Deepak Ji. Uh, same. My father also thinks that I don't do anything. And uh, uh, every day, you know, he says in the morning that uh, a, a common... Who, who in the audience resonates with that? You know, who father thinks that? There you go. Lots of hands. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, uh, every day morning, he has a complaint that why, uh, why I'm not going uh, early to the factory. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, Amitabh ji is our uh, uh, you know, brand ambassador. One day, uh, I was sitting with him, so he also said, Abhishek doesn't get up early, and I get up at 5 o'clock. So it's all the same story. And uh, recently, uh, you know, a uh, few years back, my you know, elder daughter, so one day, you know, she came uh, with me to the office. And I was in the office for 10 hours, and she was also here and there. So, when I went to lunch, pe gaya, to, you know, uh, she said to my wife, Papa, you don't do anything there. They go to the office, sit in the office, drink tea. Why do you think my father doesn't do anything there? Yes, they drink tea, they drink tea, and they sign a check and they don't do anything there. So this is how. But uh, the same, you know, I agree with the other way around. And these days, you know, I am also telling to my father and my, you know, uh, that, you know, what to do, how to do. And, you know, today's topic is the, about the next generation and yeah. about the adoption and technology. So I always try to convince him on the other way around also. Fantastic. So Preeti, so you, uh, you know, you've kind of started up very recently, although you've you know, been in the business for so long and, you know, you come from Anandarthi, which is a storied uh, financial institution in the country. What made you take this plunge now and, you know, talk to us about Lakshmi and I think you've been called a warrior uh, and uh, you've received a warrior award at some forums. Uh, we haven't seen that side of you yet, uh, but, uh, you know, talk to us about the experience and, you know, how does that, are you able to draw, you know, from, again, you know, the parent institution, not in the sense of ownership, but in terms of where you come from. Or is this just you know a, a completely a fresh start? And how's that experience been? Uh? Okay, the benefit of going last is a lot of it is already said, and half the audience is like waiting when the session gets over. But is, is uh, anyone tired? I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to go fast on this one. So I think um, you know I get this question very often: Why now? Why did you like? Why why begin from ground zero when you've built up a company that large? And I think. At every point in, in, you know, at some point in everybody's life, this, this moment comes when you feel that, okay, this is something that I really need to solve for. And I think for me, that was the turning point. I've been in financial services two decades, and um, I don't think a single day passed where I thought that, why aren't women participating in the financial markets? Why are they getting left behind? Um, and then I think finally when I felt that the time was right, there was digitization, there was so much happening, 
uh, in terms of technology, it was probably the right time to start. A lot of people actually say that startup, so I've become startup founder now. Uh, a lot of people say that startup founders, you know, they're 22, 24, that's the right time. And I'm like, this is as good a time as any because I have the experience to build, because building a, a FinTech or a FinServe company comes with a lot of responsibility. It's, it's of course about technology, but it is also about understanding financial behavior and catering to it in a very responsible manner. So that's what I bought. I have two children who are grown up, they're on their own, I have no responsibilities, so I'm fine to do this. Uh, so that's how I started. I think the challenge really was to, uh, to convince people. Um, I pitched this in a Harvard classroom, and which was a lot like this room where about 85% were men. And they asked me, why do you need a separate platform for women? And all the women said, wow, that's great. You know, why don't you set it up? Like, we'll take it to our countries. But to convince the larger financial services that, okay, this is a need and this is something that we need to work on was, I think, my biggest challenge. Um, you know, even, even family, because essentially the way financial services have, has been run so far is, the entire sort of world running after the same set of customers. Of course, now a lot of talk of inclusion, et cetera, is happening, but you have 560 million women, less than a million women participating. How many women here in the hall? Sorry, I'm taking over a little bit of your, um, your role, oh, but how many women here? Now, if you just see, if you just see the number of women that come to the table, and then how many of you invest your money? How many of you actively invest your money? The women. Fabulous. Fantastic. <laughs> so very few women, and why can we not solve for them? That's such a big opportunity. That's what made me start it. Uh, I think in terms of, um, sorry, what was the rest of your the question? The ability to leverage. Uh, yeah, so I, like I said, I think, you know, DNA is financial products, financial services, you know, understanding that ecosystem. The challenges were really understanding technology, you know, being agile, you've worked, it's like making elephants dance. Uh, so really, which is why I actually stepped out and started Lakshmi as an in, uh, independent entity. Uh, and that learning technology was probably my hardest challenge. But I think done it, done it effectively. And the second important thing was really to turn it on its head. So when I set up Lakshmi, I said, nobody comes from financial services except me. The entire team is from, not from financial services because they don't That's carry that baggage. Because we had to go back to the drawing board, create a company that just, you know, which just turned everything on its head and said, this is a problem. What is the solution without carrying the baggage of how we've always done it? So, um, that's how we started and that's how we've come so far. Today, five lakh women on the platform, largely targeted at middle income uh, women. Um, and, and I think we've, we have done well on the design on, on really the thought process on building a, techno a technology platform, which makes every woman feel that she is being catered to a, a hyper-personalized solution for her financial needs. So. Fantastic. We still haven't found out why you were called a warrior. Uh, we we leave that for another day. I'm well, that's do because because I sat there and said I want to launch something for women, and nobody had heard that financial services for women only really. <laughs> well done. Okay, one quick rapid fire round for all of you uh, before I turn it to the audience for a couple of questions, if time permits. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'll give you two words. You have to pick one. No, that's 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 it's as simple as that. Uh, so, Deepak, you have uh, change versus tradition. Change. Pretty for you, uh, values versus innovation. I don't know why I have to choose because no matter how innovative you have to be, but you have to get values. You can't uh, be. Now I, mean, I know why she's a warrior. Uh, no, no, innovation <laughs> without values can be quite harmful. It can be I a disaster, right? <laughs> Fantastic. This is one fourth the battle. So. <laughs> <laughs> Experience versus aptitude. Experience versus aptitude. I think, uh, you know, it's a thing of the right brain and the left brain coming together and the brain working as a whole. And when the brain works as a whole, it functions the best. Yeah, yeah. So, 
Only Deepak Ji gave a one word answer. Uh, I'm not commenting, but vision versus strategy. Should I stick with the women's team? <laughs> <laughs> Completely. <laughs> yeah. No, always. Lakshmi. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, yeah, I mean, vision is the legacy, right? That's what we have. And uh, strategy is hopefully what us next gen are getting, maybe even the generation after. So, uh, so it's a mix again. I'm team women. Fantastic. On that note, uh, if the audience has any questions, we'd love to take two, I guess. That's uh, what my organizers are telling me. Uh, you raise your hand first, sir, or at least I saw you first. Can someone get a mic to him? Hello. Maybe you could introduce yourself and who do, would you like uh, the question to be addressed uh, Deepak by? Deepak Ji. My question is Deepak Ji. My name is Mohan Zamulkar. I'm from Pune. Uh, and you know, Chitwale is a big brand uh, in Maharashtra. And I met uh, Indranil uh, Chitwale, third gen generation uh, entrepreneur uh, last month. And the kind of, you know, the new ideas, uh, things he's bringing on table, it's amazing. And Pune, you know, it's, it was famous uh, Chitwale, like one to 4 p.m. it was closed. And they used to take huge pride saying, we have no other branches than that, the shop in Pune city, you know. So how do we handle competition now? you know, place like Haldiram, and there are a lot of mom and pop shops out there. So I, there's a very common question from every entrepreneur here. So I would like to know from you, sir, about this. Sir, there's a competition, hai, Bika Ji. Ka. Ji? Bika Ji, there's a competitor. No, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> nowadays the competition ka jo, uh, language, hai, wo bhi definition is changed. Yeah, totally. You know, like, Bujia competition is not a, actually a Bujia competitor. It's more of the chips, yeah. more of the, you know, Maggie more of you know different kind of a snackings so uh, the competition and the you know the definition has also changed hum log raat ko kya khana pasand karte hain din mein kya khana pasand karte hain what we like to eat into breakfast and to dinner so all have a you know different kind of a meals and snacking uh, i know the chitlai pandu and the indranil and he is a good friend and they are doing very much innovative to hum log ek dusre se inspire hote hain or ek dusre inspire ho ke hum log kuch na kuch innovate karte rehte hain so competition mein bane rehne ke liye the best is that uh, you go with the innovation with your usp with your products aap jitna apne products ko aur apne consumer ko samajh ke jitna unke sath uh, chalenge utna hi aap competition mein uh, badhte rahenge nowadays you know that everyone likes to be a healthy snacking or a, a healthier snacks or a better uh, food or better meals so we are thinking on the same way ke hum log aane wale generation ke liye kya aisa banaye ke unko acha lage aur aur kis tarah se wo adopt kare so i would say ke the innovation and the better you know branding strategies marketing sales all kind of a distribution is required uh, to compete into the competition and uh, apni uh, aaj jo topic chal raha hai ki legacy ko hi aage badha ke chaliye sath mein so that is also very important Thank you very much. One more question, one last question. Why don't you... Can you get a mic here, please? Uh, again, please name the person you'd like to address your question to. Uh, hello. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kaneka Sharma. I'm the founder of Smart I Am. Uh, basically, we build assistive technology for the visually impaired. My question is for Preeti Ma'am, Preeti Gupta Ma'am. Uh, Ma'am, as a woman entrepreneur, I would like to know what opportunities or assistance or help I could get from Lakshmi uh, in finance aspects. First of all, all the best because what you're doing is fabulous. Um, so I think from the Lakshmi end, the, the one thing that we solve for, and this is this is again something that I've noticed all along that why I, you know, I get asked why are, why do we have such, like such less women entrepreneurs, right? Uh, the reason is women drop off the entrepreneurship journey because one, they have not managed their personal finance really well. When you get into entrepreneurship, you need to know that, you know, you may not for a very long time sustain or depend on that business for your living expenses. So first of all, we help in getting, you know, personal finance in order. And we are in the process actually as of setting up an entire entrepreneurship business uh, idea to uh, execution uh, cohort. So maybe we can connect post this. Um, yes, but the one thing I will always tell you is 
you know, when we are an entrepreneur, I think we should leave aside the word woman entrepreneur. We are an entrepreneur. So don't think of yourself. That's one thing that, that I've always noticed, right? So all the best to you. Thank you so much. Well, that's all the time we have for. Uh, thank you very much to my panelists uh, for a great uh, discussion. Uh, and thanks to the audience for uh, you know listening to us. Uh, can we have a big round of applause for this lovely panel?